We're here in Detroit getting a sneak peek at the Ram 2500 and 3500 heavy duty pickups. Last year in Detroit, they debuted the Ram 1500 pickup and we were so impressed that we bought one. We put tons of miles on it and we haven't been disappointed. But that's also set expectations really high for this heavy duty pickup. Can lightning strike twice? We're about to find out. Last year's base engine was a 5.7 liter Hemi V8. The 6.4 liter Hemi V8 was optional. This year, the 6.4 is the standard offering. But it's not just that. They've gotten rid of the six-speed automatic and given it an eight-speed automatic. That was an amazing change when they did it to the Ram 1500 several years ago. and We expect more of the same here. But if you don't want a gas V8, They've really improved the 6.7 liter Cummins turbo diesel as well. It's still a straight six, but now the base version of it has 370 horsepower and 850 pound-feet of torque, which is a big improvement. But if you get a 3500, you can opt for the marquee high output version, which makes 400 horsepower and get ready for this, 1,000 pound-feet of torque, amazing. Ram is putting all of that torque to good use because the maximum tow rating of a 3500 Dually with that engine is 35,100 pounds. That's almost 4,000 pounds higher than it was last year. And the maximum payload is 7,680 pounds, which is higher than anyone else as well. But they've also got the suspension to do it. Both versions of the truck, the 2500 and the 3500, offer an optional rear air suspension. That was true last year, but this year they've added a new capability, a bed lowering mode that allows you to lower the hitch ball or the tailgate two inches. You can actually back under the trailer and raise the truck up and make the coupling. You don't have to jack the trailer up and down as far to make the connection. That's something I really am looking forward to playing with. One of the things that really got us excited about the Ram 1500 is what they did inside the cab. And the Ram 2500 and 3500 are nearly as impressive. I'll get to the nearly in a minute, but here's the stuff that's really cool. You've got the 12 inch touchscreen option. The 8.4 is uh, also available. They've also just improved the quality of all the switch gear and the materials. I mean, this is a really, really nice place to spend time. And if you're gonna tow long distances, like this thing is made to tow, that's really important. This truck also has something that other trucks in the class don't have. You can get a safety suite with automatic emergency braking, which actually involves the trailer brakes as well, which is really unique, and adaptive cruise control that'll work all the way down to a stop. That package also comes with rain sensing wipers, LED headlights, and automatic high beams. It's a pretty unique setup in a heavy duty truck. If you get the gasoline V8, there's a rotary shifter for the eight-speed automatic. But the diesels have a six-speed automatic that's controlled by this column shifter. So whichever way you want it, they've got it. One thing that's missing, though, is the manual. Last time you could get a detuned version of the diesel with a manual transmission. This time they're not offering it. It's also got the Swiss Army knife center console we first saw in the 1500. I mean, look at this thing. It opens up in all these different ways. There's all this space. Uh, a million ways to connect your devices, a wireless charging pad, and it's got side pockets here on each side. This is really nice, but there's a couple things missing. One thing that's missing is this steering wheel doesn't telescope. It tilts, but it doesn't telescope like the Ram 1500. And it's also got an older design on the knobs here, so it's like they changed a lot of things, but they left a couple of things the same as last year. Uh, but from the driver's seat, you would barely notice that. The back half of the Ram Heavy Duty cab is a little different from the 1500. The crew cab is the same as it was before, so it's not quite as big as the Ram 1500's crew cab. But that's because Ram has always had a mega cab for the 2500 and 3500, and that's what I'm sitting in right now. It's got more leg room than the uh, 2500 crew cab, and it has this trick, seats recline, which is something that the 1500 did in the crew cab, this one does it in the mega cab, and it reclines back so you actually get more leg room as you recline the seat. It's also got the same nice features on the back of the center console. It's a flow-through console with vents, there's USB and USB-Cs, and a 110 outlet, and that's pretty much like uh, what we saw in the 1500. So the crew cab's a little smaller than a 1500 crew cab, 
But the Mega Cab, it's right there, and it's got the recliner that makes it a really nice place to spend time. All in all, there's a lot to like here. The cab, the tech, the air suspension, and it's hard to argue with a thousand pound-feet of torque. That's a lot of lightning. I think they've struck twice. There are a whole lot more videos where this came from. Subscribe now to see all of Edmund's latest reviews.